This segment brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. Hello and welcome to Horsin' Around. I'm Dr. Chris Blevins at Kansas State University Veterinary Health Center. Today, joined by Dr. Katie Delf. She is one of the internal medicine uh, clinicians here at the vet school. And today, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about a fairly common disease that maybe people may not think is common, and that's West Nile. Some people, uh, you know, horse owners will not recognize whether to really need to vaccinate for West Nile anymore because we don't hear anything about it. But what are kind of things going on about West Nile? Do horses still get West Nile here in the United States or even in Kansas? Yes, so horses do still get West Nile. Um, first came to the United States in 1999 and it has um, seen a downturn since kind of the first few years, but um, horses still do get West Nile and um, we do have vaccines for it, um, and it tends to be horses that aren't kind of adequately vaccinated um, that do tend to get the disease. Now you met, you know, a couple good points on that. One is that uh, horses, or we don't see as many horses getting West Nile now like we used to. And why do you think that is? I mean, do we? I mean, we obviously still have horses that are getting sick with it. How come we don't have as many horses getting sick with West Nile? So I think why we don't have as many horses getting sick is because there is um, there are a few different vaccines available on the market for horses. So um, that is a nice luxury we have as horse owners as a prevention tool. And um, you know, working with veterinarians, you can actually get your horse vaccinated for West Nile. So how would you adequately vaccinate your horse for West Nile, like what type of uh, protocol would they need to be considering if they're gonna vaccinate their horse for West Nile? Yes, so for a young horse, like a foal, probably the ideal time to start vaccinating if the mare is adequately vaccinated um, is when they're four to six months of age. Okay. And then they should have um, basically two boosters by the time they're 12, 12 months old. So three to four weeks after the initial vaccine, and then again, kind of um, two to three months after that. Again, kind of three vaccines by the time they're 12 months old, and then an annual booster thereafter. If there is an older horse that hasn't been previously vaccinated, they would need a similar course, um, mm -hmm. having an initial vaccine, and then two boosters again, and then um, annual boosters thereafter. You know, I think that's interesting to remember that when people give maybe the first time the vaccine, it's not necessarily that protective or potentially not as protective as if they do the whole series. So I think making sure they consult with their veterinarian to make sure they're adequately vaccinating there at the first part is important. Yes. What, uh, so how do horses, you know, we've talked about this before, but again, how do horses get to West Nile? Um, so they do get it through a mosquito that bites, um, that feeds on the horse basically, that has fed on um, one of our um, amplifying hosts, which are birds in our area. So birds actually have the virus in their bloodstream and then the mosquitoes feed on the birds um, and then are able to pass the virus on to our um, horses. And that's also interesting that, you know, there's people that sample mosquitoes and they're positive for West Nile in Kansas, all over the United States, uh, here in the, in the you know, lower 48. So I think keeping those things in mind is, is important, so. Yes. Well, thank you, Dr. Delph, and giving us some kind of updated version of West Nile and that we still need to vaccinate for West Nile. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm Dr. Chris Blevins at Kansas State University Veterinary Health Center, and we'll see you around. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com.